All right, in this video, Julia is gonna show you the best exercises to get strong legs to improve your balance as well as keep you active into your older years. Julia is 62 years old and she's gonna show you what she can do and how it's gonna help anybody who wants to continue to be vibrant and strong. Go ahead, Julie. Okay, uh, well, I'm almost 63 actually, but um, I'm a big advocate for older adults to stay active and healthy. Um, a lot of things that make me happy are just being active. Um, I love to do lots of outdoor activities such as, you know, paddle boarding, bicycling, hiking, water skiing. Um, and just because I'm 62, almost 63, doesn't mean I can't continue to do those things. That's so. right. And you should see her chased after the four or five <laughs> and seven year old grandkids. <laughs> That's always a treat. They, they can hardly keep away from her. <laughs> Julie, this shirt, let's talk about it just a little <laughs> bit. It is loud. What's going on with it? <laughs> Says my bicycling shirt has yeah. to be bright. To yeah, be turn around. I like the back <laughs> of it. Good. <laughs> Look at that. We can do it. So this is part of her bicycling group, and they go out and bike hard. They're doing hills mm -hmm. in La Crosse area, and it's mm -hmm. fun. All right, let's get into the exercises and a little bit more serious mm -hmm. activity with those legs. Right. Now, I wanna put my two cents in about leg strengthening as a physical therapist. When people have strong leg, legs, it can be a game changer. It allows them to go hiking, to do activities that they normally wouldn't do, and it keeps their balance so you don't fall. Very important. Now, one thing as we, before we get into this, if you wanna join along, that's great, or when you do these, do not do them too aggressively the first time, particularly if you've been sedentary. What will happen is you're gonna get sore muscles. The next day you're gonna be sore walking around. You're gonna be cursing me out, maybe Julie, <laughs> but probably me. And too much too soon is a big thing. So take it easy the first day <clears throat> or so. Take a break between each day and then we'll build into it. You will get stronger. All right, let's go on to the very first one. We're doing this in two different sections. First of all, some beginner exercises three of them and then if that's too easy for you or you build up and advance past them we're going to show you three good strong exercises that will definitely keep you going and get you stronger all right the first one is lunges now if you haven't done lunges before they do incorporate a balance component so the first thing just show the basic lunge mm -hmm. first please julie good she's got good tall posture she's upright you don't want to bring your knee too far past your toes. If there's no pain, you can, but just be careful sometimes that will pain. She's doing all these on the right side. You can do up to 10 on one leg and then do 10 on the other, or show them how you can do the alternating leg. This is strictly up to you. Right leg and then step forward with the mm -hmm. left leg and then continue to alternate it. You can see Julie is using her hand for balance on the plinth at home. Just simply use a countertop or a tabletop for balance. Now, if it's too easy and you don't think you need the balance component, how are your legs holding up, Julie? Good. I, I'm not tired at all. <laughs> Keep going then. Julie yeah. does have really strong legs. She's really a proponent of leg strength. Now, if it's too easy, simply use fingertips. That will stress the balance. Go ahead. So reach out so they can see. Now just go to one fingertip. Not just a tip, just a <laughs> tip. This is in therapy. This is exactly how I promote people's balance as they progress, okay? Now as you go on and you don't need that at all, you can simply put your hands at your hips or what do you like to do, Julie? Yeah, I would do that. Just put my hands on my hips. Good, all right. Now you can see, you know, you may not be able to do near this many to start out with and I would not advise it. Now another option for the lunge is actually to go backwards, which is a really nice option. It's gonna help your balance and your proprioception, but that's into the therapy realm. Can you demonstrate it, Julie? Okay. Now, do you find these a little more difficult as far as balance? Uh, it works out great with your hand on the table or bed. So it's more difficult or easier than going but. forward? <laughs> Uh, actually, I think it's easier. Easier? You're <laughs> unusual. Most people find it more difficult <laughs> because you're not, you can't see where your foot is going. And sometimes that throws people off. Now, do you like to go one foot at a time or alternate going backwards? Mm. I like to do one foot at a time. Okay. And just focus on the one side. Sure, sure. <clears throat> so you're feeling, I'm assuming this muscle worked the most? The Definitely. Quadriceps? Yep, right in through here. Yep, okay. If you want to alternate, you can do that as well. 
if I'm working with a patient for balance, I will have them alternate right to left because that's a functional motion. Come on, help me out, Julie. Go right to left. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was there focusing on my quad muscle there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> she's starting to feel her quads burn is what she's saying. Okay, let's get on to the next one. All right, let's gonna go into squats. This is a nice one, and there's some real common <clears throat> problems that beginners actually do with this. Typically, will people oftentimes will have their feet close together, and then they actually lean forward and flex at the hips too much. Can you demonstrate how that Sorry. particular? Mm -hmm. There you go. So she's mostly got hip flexion. We're not working the legs a little bit, but not much. So stand back up tall, Julie. Feet about shoulder width or a little bit wider mm -hmm. apart. Go a little wider than that. Let's exaggerate a little bit. Okay, shoulders back, good posture. We're using a chair for balance. We'll progress to without the chair if you're ready. Go ahead, Julie. Okay. There, now look at the difference here. She's got great posture here. Look at her back is straight, arched in a little bit, even better. She's squatting at the knees. Her knees are not going over her toes very much. Less stress on the knee joint itself. And a lot of work coming from the quadriceps and the glute muscles. Perfect job. 10 of these is typically what we're going for. How are you feeling, Julie? Good. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Now, let's go on to the next one. All right, now this third beginner exercise, we're gonna use a stairway. Hopefully there is at least one rail to help her balance. If you have two, you can use both hands. I like this one particularly because it works strengthening and function. Getting up and down stairs gets harder as you get older. The more you do this, it'll just be one of those things that's natural as it was when you were younger. So, Julie, show how people sometimes will do this improperly. So she's leaning forward, poor posture, and she's just bringing the foot off the ground a little bit. If you're gonna do it like this, and you may not realize it, but if you are, it's really not doing anything. We need to do it proper. So she's gonna straighten up, good strong posture, bring the one foot up, and go ahead and do the technique, go ahead. Good. Notice, as she does this, she comes up, good posture, and this foot actually completes by touching and then going back down, so you have complete motion. There you go. Do 10 on one leg, go ahead and do 10 on the other. If you prefer doing alternating, go ahead. I personally prefer it because it's more functional. You don't go up steps one at a time, typically you alternate, but that is up to you. As far as strengthening, it won't make much difference, if any at all. How are you doing, Julie? Great. Good, you're doing a nice job of <clears throat> Uh, making this look easy. Now, we're gonna go through a whole other series of this. It'll only take a minute or two, the more advanced uh, te techniques, if that's what you're looking for. Julie, are you ready for that? I am, yes. You're gonna start sweating <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, so we're gonna start out with a walking lunge. Um, sometimes it's nice uh, to hold the booyah stick out, just to keep balance, your balance a little bit but better. Let's look at this. This is not <laughs> just a booyah stick, this is our booyah stick. This is a baby booyah stick. <laughs> Actually, you don't need one of these. Simply use a cane, a stick, whatever you want. And you don't have to use it, but I know mm -hmm. Julie prefers it. It helps her with her balance. Okay, and then we're just gonna start walking forward. Good, nice job. Again, the balance on this is quite a bit more challenging than the previous exercises. <laughs> Any other variations that you like to do with this, Julie? Uh, yeah, we can do it um, without, I mean, obviously you can do it without the booyah stick mm -hmm. <clears throat> or you can um, just keep walking um, without breaking in between. Ah, there you go. So it's a continuous motion. Can you do that backwards? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Put you on the spot. <laughs> She's doing wonderful. All right. Good. This particular exercise is really good if you're a bicycler for hill climbing, getting those quads and glutes strengthened for something functional like that, staying mm -hmm. active outside. All right, Julie did want to show one other option that she uses, and that's actually using the dumbbells, not the booyah stick, the <laughs> baby booyah stick. Go ahead. Okay. So what, tell them about the dumbbells. Yeah, there. so it just adds a little bit more resistance. She's using three pounds in each hand. She usually uses 25 pounds, but we didn't have them here. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but she, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, whatever weight works for you so you can do these safely, comfortably, uh, and it does make, does that make quite a bit of difference, Julie, those even three pounds? 
Uh, yeah, it adds, definitely adds some resistance. Right. Makes it a little bit more challenging. Good. All right, let's get on to the next one. Okay. All right, we cannot get away without doing mm -hmm. the inevitable squats. She's got three different options. Go ahead, Julie, okay. show them. All right, so shoulders back, and then we're just going to squat down low. Good. Now, you put your hands out with the, booyah, the baby booyah stick. That's mm -hmm. strictly their choice, right? Right, yep. Usually, I don't use a booyah stick. I just put my hands out. How about your feet? Make sure your feet are wide. I even go a little wider than that. I always emphasize wide base, you're stronger, you're more stable. Here's the next variation. Julie's gonna okay. continue to have the wide feet, good posture, but watch what she does with her toes. Up on Oops. the toes. Whoa, <laughs> do it again. Let's try Keep that it again. Going. There you go. So here we're working balance as well as the calf muscles, which are critical for walking, running, biking, everything. It's just a little thing that can make a big difference. Good. I like the arm motion. It's like you're praying. Nice. <laughs> All right. Now, there is actually one more option that's more difficult. We call it plyometrics. Go ahead, Julie. Show them how that works. Yeah. Ah, yeah, you just keep doing that. I'm gonna talk about it a little bit. These are known as plyometrics. You wanna spring up and spring down. It definitely works the muscles. If you wanna get more athletic, athletes do plyometrics all the time to get to their peak. How you doing? Yeah, I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> I was just We also kidding. call those jump squats. Jump squats, yeah, okay, great. That is a wonderful accent. Yeah, thank you, Julie. Let's uh, break one second, and we want, you wanted to talk a little bit about keeping older people ha active, particularly women, right? Right. All right. All right, so um, one of my main reasons for coming on today is because I just wanna make sure that we're encouraging women to stay active um, from all ages, you know, especially up into your 50s, 60s, and 70s. Uh, there's no reason that you can't stay active. Um, bicycling, hiking, playing pickleball, all those things are fun um, to keep you in fit. And then it's also a great social activity so that you can keep in contact with people. And I think things like this, particularly when you retire and that daily routine mm -hmm. changes from running all over the place to all of a sudden maybe an empty space, a wonderful mm -hmm. way. And Julie's wonderful with this. She has a a bike group that she rides with. You go to mm -hmm. burn boot camp. She does pickleball. I can't keep up to her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it just uh, keeps you young and it's just great to be involved in the community and activities. Um, and it also is a good role model for your kids and grandkids to see that you're being staying active and being active every day. Absolutely. What Grandma no sitting grandpa. in front of the TV. Right. Get away from the TV, <laughs> away from the screens, a silly cell phone. Get yourself out and enjoy the air. Mm -hmm. But Julie did work in, uh, what did you work at the hospital with keeping people safe, right? Right. For th well, employee health and safety right. and security. And we just want to make sure that. So every time yeah. I do something at home with anything, she <laughs> says, safety glasses on. Yeah. Wear your helmet. Mm -hmm. And look at you. She's got, this is her yeah. biking outfit <laughs> here to keep visible. So stay yeah. safe. Did you want to say hi to your biking group? I do, yes. Um, our bike group is called WOW2, and that means Women on Wheels. <laughs> um, yep, we stay active and engaged uh, throughout the summer. How long do your rides get on a summer night? Uh, we usually go from 20 to 35 miles on a weeknight. On weekends, we do closer to 50 miles. Right. Mm -hmm. And we live in La Crosse, which means there are bluffs. There's about... Two to 300 feet vertical at least. Mm -hmm. And some of them are pretty darn steep. Mm -hmm. So they get through it and I'm real proud of Julie. And it's a wonderful group of women. So today's product we're talking about is the Q2 Massager. It comes in three color options. We have blue, black, and red. So this massage gun comes with five different heads Brad is holding there. We really like the air head, which is the cushioned one, because it can work well in bony areas, as well as the round head. The other heads are very good, but they're more for a specific trigger point area. And it also comes with this convenient carrying case where it can hold everything you need. This has been one of our most popular massage guns. We've had it for about three years. It's 
small. It only weighs one pound. It's great for traveling with. It has a seven millimeter amplitude, meaning how far into the muscle belly it can get, and a 32 pound stall force, which is pretty strong for a massage gun that only weighs one pound. That's right. And the nice thing about it is the cost. You'll get these anywhere from $69, maybe plus or minus, depending on what you find on Amazon. It's a great device. You will not be unhappy with it. It is also rechargeable. Simply plug it in. Typically mm -hmm. takes two hours to charge and roughly lasts about four hours, depending upon how intense you have it. There you go. Enjoy your massage gun. BobandBrad.com. You can get it there as well, I think. Can yes. You? Yeah, okay. Our store section. <laughs> All right. If you want to watch another video with Julie showing strengthening, we've got arm strength and shoulder strength. Lose arm flab mm -hmm. using body weight, dumbbells, or bands. She does an excellent job again. Make sure you watch it and like it and, you know, give us good comments. Or her, you know, it's easier <laughs> to comment for Julie than a good one to me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet.